Today I'm going to show you how to develop your black and white film the cheap way with D96 Developer from the Film Photography Project. Now you are going to have to spend a few bucks on supplies to get started, but some of the stuff you only have to buy once, so it's a good long term investment, and a lot of the stuff you can get at the kitchen store or even the dollar store to save a few pennies. Now we're going to start with the stuff you can't get at the dollar store. I don't have my own dedicated darkroom, so I develop my film in my kitchen sink. And to do that, I use a daylight film developing tank. Patterson is a popular brand. Mine has two reels with it. I like the ones with the big tabs here. You're going to need your chemicals, at least two, and there are a couple other ones that are optional, but they really are nice to have. So obviously you need your developer, and today we're going to use the D96 developer from the FPP or Film Photography Project. It comes in powder form, which definitely helps make it a bargain because it's a lot cheaper to ship. You're going to need a fixer. I'm using Ilford Rapid Fixer, which is a liquid concentrate. FPP has their own fixer, which is in powder form as well. I got this fancy stir stick at my photo store for three bucks. It's good for mixing up solutions from powders. So you absolutely need the developer and the fixer. Now in between the developing and the fixing, there is the stop bath. Now today I'm going to use water for that, but you can buy an acidic stop bath too, which can be helpful, especially for shorter developing times. And another optional thing that's really nice to have is photo flow. Mine is from Kodak. Again, FPP has their own version, but you just use a couple drops of photo flow in your final soak to avoid water streaks and spots. Again, optional, but highly recommended. All right, this next item is also optional, and that is an immersion circulator. It helps maintain temperatures, and I'll be using one today. Now, if you have a completely dark and light tight room, you may not need this next item, but when I load my reels in complete darkness, I use a dark bag or a changing bag, and I store my negatives in print file sleeves. And I've got links to all these specialty items in the description. Now the rest of the stuff you can get at a kitchen store or the dollar store. You're going to need some mixing containers. I use dollar store pitchers. I use spatulas to mix my liquids. You're going to need some measuring cups and funnels. I use a candy thermometer to check temps. And a little medicine dropper for the photo flow. I've got various rags around to clean up so I don't waste a bunch of paper towels. You're going to need some quart or liter bottles. I use plastic seltzer bottles so I can squeeze any excess air out. You'll need a pair of scissors for 35 millimeter film, which is what we're developing today. To get the film out of the cartridge, you can use a fancy film retriever, which I don't have. Sometimes you can pry the cartridge open just using your thumbs. Or what I typically do is use a simple church key can opener to pry the lid off. I hang my negatives up to dry on an old shower curtain rod with a utility clamp on one end and then just weight it down in the other end with a simple fridge magnet. If you need to adjust the temperature of your developer, you can just use an old bucket for a water bath. And speaking of water, one of the most important things you need to get is distilled water. I mix all my chemicals with distilled water and I use it for my final photo flow soak as well. Where I live, it's always under a dollar a gallon and it's worth every penny. All right, before we mix up all our chemicals, we're going to load the film onto the reels, which needs to be done in complete darkness, which doesn't make for a very good video. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in the light so you can see what I'm doing. But again, if you're going to do this, you need to do it in the dark or else you will expose and ruin your film. Now, I typically do this in a dark bag. So I'm going to go ahead and show you my setup in the bag first. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it outside of the bag so you can see what I'm doing. But again, these next steps need to be done in complete darkness. Now, so I don't lose all my stuff inside the bag, I use an old cleaned out peanut can to hold my film, scissors, and can opener, and I've got the developing tank and reels over here. Zip this zipper, and this one. Now we're light tight. Now your arms are going to go in these holes, so I always take off my watch and wear short sleeves for this. Ordinarily, you're going to do everything by feel because you can't see what you're doing in the bag or a darkened room. And after you do it a few times, it's really not too bad. Just like anything else we're doing, it takes some practice. So again, for today's demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you how to do this outside the bag. But again, when you get ready to do this for real, make sure you do it in a darkened room or in the bag. First, we're going to take our bottle opener and our film, and we're going to pop off the bottom like this. And we're going to push our film out. We're going to cut off where it curves here on the leader. So we're going to just go ahead and cut this straight across like this. And again, I'll usually do this in the peanut can. Then we're going to make two little diagonal cuts like this. This is going to help load it onto the reel a little bit easier. Just like that. We're going to take our reel here. You see it's got different kind of tabs here. These are flat tabs here, curved ones here. There's little ball bearings in there. So we're going to feed this film now from the flat tab into the curved tab here. You have to make sure you go past those little ball bearings right there. Just 
So we're past the ball bearings. Now this is a ratchet system, so you're gonna twist this back and forth to load the film onto the reel. This is a short roll, it's only 12 exposures, so it's gonna go pretty quick. Now when you reach the end, we're just gonna cut this off at the end here. Cut the film off the reel. Like that. Now the reel is ready to go onto the spindle here. I've already got another reel in there. This is a two reel tank. We're gonna put this on like this. And just see it like this. And now this is light tight and you can take this into the kitchen or wherever your sink is to start developing and that's gonna be the next step. Now that we've got the film loaded into the tank, it's time to prepare our chemicals. Okay, we've got our pack of powder developer here. We've got the FPP D96 and this is enough to make a whole gallon of film developer. So again, it is a powder and if we take a look at the directions here, we're gonna see that it says uh, dissolve contents of package into 101 ounces or three liters of 122 degree to 130 degree Fahrenheit water. Stir until dissolved. Add water to bring final contents up to one gallon or 3.8 liters. So the first thing we need to do is get 101 ounces of water measured out. And of course I always use distilled water for my chemicals. And just so happens, we have a full gallon of distilled water here. Uh, which of course is 128 ounces. So my way to do it is I'm just gonna pour out 27 ounces of water and then I know the rest is 101 ounces and that's what we're gonna heat up. Okay, so I've got 27 ounces of water measured out. So we're gonna set this to the side. And we know that the rest of this gallon is gonna be 101 ounces, which is the perfect volume to mix up our developers. So next, we're going to pour this into my one gallon pitcher. And now we need to get this up to 122 to 131 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. And to do that, we're gonna go ahead and head over to the sink and heat up our water bath. All right, we're heating up our plastic tub with hot water. And once it gets a little more full, we're gonna go ahead and plug in our immersion circulator. This is actually the FPP heat helper. And that's what's gonna go ahead and help us get our distilled water up to temperature. All right, let's get our distilled water into the bath. All right, we got enough water in. We're gonna go ahead and plug in our heat unit. And we're gonna get her set up here. Now remember, our target temperature needs to be at least 122 degrees but uh, in order to heat this up a little bit quicker, I'm gonna go ahead and set the temperature gauge higher than that. So we're gonna set it for 140 degrees. And it looks like our bath water right now is 114 degrees Fahrenheit, so we got just a little bit of ways to go. And of course, what I'm concerned about is the temperature of the water in the pitcher here. So I've got my candy thermometer here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Mine is set for Fahrenheit. You can get it set for Celsius if you prefer. And the water in here is only about 78 degrees. So again, we're gonna let that cook for a little bit. All right, while that distilled water is heating up for the developer, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up our other chemicals. So we're gonna look at some fixer. And I happen to have Ilford Rapid Fixer here. Now this is mixed one part fixer to four parts water. 
And again, of course, I'm going to use distilled water like I typically do. So we're going to measure out five ounces of fixer to 20 ounces of water. Okay, we are right at five ounces. And we've already got 20 ounces of water measured out, distilled water here, so we're gonna mix these two together. Now, this is a liquid, so it's gonna mix a little bit easier than the powder chemistry does. And we're not heating this either, by the way. We're just doing this fixture at room temperature. Again, liquid should mix up pretty easily. And I've really just got a household spatula to mix. And I find it handy to have more than one spatula around so you don't have to necessarily rinse it off real well between steps. You can just use a new spatula each time you mix a new chemical. All right, we got just a plastic propel bottle here. We're gonna pour into. So I just got a, again, regular kitchen funnel. We're gonna pour our fixer in. It is filled up to the top. You don't want a lot of air getting in there. And you know what? One other tip for this, I'm gonna go ahead and just use a little piece of tape here. And put this on here like this. And I'm gonna mark this with the date that I mix this up. And then anytime I develop a roll of film and fix with this, I'll just put a little hash mark on here so I can keep track of how many times I've used this fixture. All right, one more chemical we're gonna mix up. Uh, and this is again, easy, this is at room temperature. And this is just, I'm gonna fill this measuring cup with distilled water. And for our final step of the process, We've got some photo flow. Of course, this is to guard against streaking and water spots, that sort of thing. And you really just need a few drops of this. And this is why a bottle like this can last you forever. So I got my little pipette here. Just a few drops is all you need. Stir that up a little bit. And that's gonna be our final step before hanging up to dry. And we've reached our temp, we're good to go. So now, we're gonna cut open the FPP D96. Careful, you really don't want to spill this. Not all of it. I'm going to stir a little bit first. And I'm going to go ahead and use, instead of just a regular spatula, I do have this little handy dandy mixture that I got at my local photography store, World of Photography, for three bucks. I'm going to go ahead and dump the rest of the powder in. And continue to mix.
And again, heating this up really does help the dissolving process. And we really don't need this hot water bath anymore. I'm going to take this out. And you'll remember the final step of the directions here uh, do say to go ahead and add water to bring final contents up to one gallon. Now, nice thing about this pitcher is it does have a one gallon line marked on here. So we just need to add a little bit more distilled water to get to that line. Right there, and of course we're gonna stir again. And there we have our gallon of FPP D96 black and white negative film developer. Now, I am gonna go ahead and let this cool a little bit, and once it cools down, I'm gonna use a trick from Leslie Lazenby, who suggests instead of just storing this in a one gallon container, Go ahead and split it up into four quarts or four liters. And we're gonna let this cool down. That's exactly what we're gonna do. And again, on our plastic bottles, I've marked the developer, the date that I mixed it, and every time I develop with this specific bottle, I'm gonna go ahead and make a hash mark here. And again, these are just seltzer bottles. Plastic, so you can squeeze the air out as much as possible. And again, we're just gonna use clean kitchen funnel. All right, we're gonna start with our pre-soak for about a minute. And I'm just using the stopwatch or timer on my phone. Okay, we're gonna dump out our pre-rinse. Sometimes you'll get a little color off of this, especially if you're developing like a foma pan film. There wasn't a whole lot of color on this, so we're going to go ahead and shake this out really good. And our D96 developer is at temp, 68 degrees. We're going to pour that in. And like I do with most of my black and white films, I'm going to go ahead and agitate this for the first 30 seconds. And then we're gonna do a five second agitation every 30 seconds after that. Now we're developing Eastman Kodak Double X or 5222. The FPP recommends seven and a half minutes at 68 degrees. Massive depth chart says six and a half minutes, so we're probably gonna go right down the middle Call it about seven minutes. Gonna give it a tap, get rid of those bubbles. And again, this is movie film, so this should be perfect for the D96 developer. Another five seconds or so of agitation. Remember, this is a fairly low contrast developer, so if you want a little more contrast, you can always be a little bit more aggressive in your agitation. Of course, when you do that, you're gonna increase the grain as well. And I'm not gonna make you sit through seven minutes of developing, so we'll go ahead and do a time lapse and fast forward here. All right, we're coming up on seven minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring this out. And remember, this is not a one shot. That's the nice thing about this D96 is you get to reuse it. And pour it out fairly quickly. Next up, we gotta do our stop bath. I'm gonna make sure I got all this developer out of here. 
Let's get that stop bath going quickly. Using just water today. Uh, if you have a particularly short developing time, you may want to use an acid bath, something kind of vinegar based. Give a quick rinse. Just going to swish this around a little bit. We'll keep it in about a minute or so. All right, our minute's up. We're gonna dump this out. Again, just water. We go right down the drain. It's time for our fixture. Now we're using Ilford Rapid Fixture today. So it shouldn't take too long, especially since it's a brand new, fresh batch. So let's get that going. And we're gonna treat this like the developer. Agitate it for the first 30 seconds, and then agitate every 30 seconds for about five seconds each, 30 seconds afterwards. We're gonna go ahead and fix for about six minutes. That should be plenty of time. Some films you have to go longer. You got a tea grain film, tabular grain. Of course, if you take it out of the fixer and it's not fixed enough, well, you can always stick it back in. All right, six minutes are up. We should be fixed pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and dump out the fix. Remember, this is reusable. So, you go ahead and just put it right back into the bottle here. Plastic bottles are good, you can squeeze out any excess air. And now that this is fixed, we can actually open the tank and take the lid off. I'm gonna dry this off a little bit. And again, it's fixed, so it's okay to expose it to light. Next step is a rinse. We're gonna do a simple tap water rinse here and wash. For several minutes. Some people use a, a little hose to really get in there and really wash it out well. I don't have a hose like that, so we're just gonna do, again, simple tap rinse. And while we're rinsing, it's a good time to make a couple marks on our bottle here. Just kind of keeping track of the rolls we're developing. We're going to start with some hash marks here. Two rolls there on the developer. And we got our fixture, squeeze out the air. And we'll mark this for two rolls as well. All right, if you want to be a little more environmentally friendly and not use all this running water, you can look up the Ilford method, which involves filling the tank, inverting it, and emptying it several times. Or you can use a product like the FPP carries here. It's an archival permanent wash, and this will drastically reduce your wash times as well. All right, final step this is our last soak with, if you remember this from before, this is our distilled water that has a couple drops of photo flow in it. And that photo flow is going to help us reduce streaking, water spots, things like that. And 
Just give it a quick spin here. You really don't want to agitate too much because you don't want a lot of bubbles. We're going to let that soak for about a minute or so. Take our reel out. And we're going to shake off as much excess water as we can. Take it off the reel. Got some good looking images. All right, let's hang this up to dry. All right, just got a plain old utility clamp here. Hang this up on the bathroom. Shower rod here, and then I got little weighted magnets for the bottom. We're gonna let it dry for a couple hours and see what we got. Now that the negatives are dry, I've scanned them with my Epson V550, and I'd like to share some of the results with you here. So again, these images were taken on Eastman Kodak Double X with my Canon EOS 3 in Shawnee, Ohio. If you want to see this full series of images, go ahead and check out my Shawnee, Ohio short film. Now, a lot of what we talked about here applies to black and white film developing in general, but now I'm going to share a couple specifics that apply really only to the FPP D96 developer, and for that we're going to go straight to the FPP D96 website. So to review the basics, FPP D96 powder makes a gallon of developer when mixed with water. It was designed for motion picture film like Double X. It's a lower contrast developer. It's got a long shelf life. And this is where the cheap part comes in. You may be able to get up to 50 rolls out of this gallon. Now, not counting your initial cost for things like the tank, you factor in the cost of the fixer and the photo flow, which lasts forever. And you're still coming in under a dollar a roll for developing. A lot cheaper than a lab. Plus, you've got a lot more control over the process and just the satisfaction and feeling of accomplishment of doing it yourself. Unlike C41 films where every stock has the same processing time, there's a lot of variability for different combinations of black and white developers and film stocks. My go-to resource for developing times is the massive dev chart at digitaltruth.com. They've got D96 developing times for XX, FP4, Tmax, Tri-X, and if you go to the film photography store's D96 page, they've got times for even more films, including one of my favorites, Ilford HP5 Plus. So if you haven't tried developing black and white film yet, I hope this video gave you a little more confidence to try it yourself. It really is a fun hands-on process, and if an old guy like me can do it, chances are you can too. That'll do it for this video, so until next time, do some good, have some fun, and develop some film.